Hello, I'm Doran Ellen Beldotan in Svatan, Israel. Um, there's a lot of discussion on the internet concerning uh, leaving, vegan leaving veganism and uh, both sides of the issue. I see that there's a lot of sorrow and a lot of rancor and a lot of disappointment uh, among those who have left veganism. Um, which is often expressed as, as anger, and then there are reactions to that anger, back of which is, is sorrow and disappointment. And I hope to be able to uh, add the benefit of, of my experience with veganism, which is entirely positive. But before I start giving you uh, my spiel, I'd like you to meet someone. So, presto changeo, technological magic, and... Hello, everybody. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> this is my husband, Daniel. Uh, before I start talking, I'd like you to meet Danielle a little bit. Um, Danielle is a 79-year-old vegan. He has been vegan most of his life, not all of his life, a little bit in the army he got off it, and a little bit in the kibbutz he got off it, but he's been vegan most of his life. Um, Dan became vegan because his mom became vegan. She had a stomach ailment, and she went to a health farm that put her on juices many years ago. It was a health farm very much like the Gerson Institute and uh, they saved her life and told her that she should go on a vegan diet and when she found that it was too hard to cook for everybody in the family vegan for herself and regular food for everybody else the whole family switched over so Dan how old is your mom now? 96 96 uh, I'd to 120 and uh, Dan regularly goes to visit his mom um, his mother has been either vegan or vegetarian most of her life too. Does she still, what, does she eat any meat at all? None, no, absolutely not. So, uh, before I start talking, I just want you all to know that, uh, yeah, it can be done long term. Thanks for your help, Dan. You're welcome. <laughs> if that wasn't impressive enough, I'm going to uh, provide a link in the description below to a community in Israel who are originally from America. Um, they call themselves various names. Most people know them as the Black Hebrew community. They are strict vegans and have been through since the 1960s. I think it's the third generation in their community who are vegan. Uh, the women go through their pregnancies vegan, all the children are raised vegan, they're vegan all their lives. And uh, I'd like you to see <clears throat> uh, the longevity of the older folks and how the subsequent two generations who have been raised as vegan look. Um, so that should, uh, that should silence any discussion as to whether or not uh, veganism is, is sustainable long term. <clears throat> um, I've been vegan for almost seven years. It just so happened, I didn't even know it until the next year, that I became vegan on International Vegan Day. So I think that's November 1st, right? So I know that, that that's, uh, it's been so long, I don't remember when I started already, but I know that International Vegan Day is when I became vegan, I, that's seven years ago. Um, I'm blessed to be living in Israel and being vegan. Uh, in Israel we have the largest per capita rate of uh, vegetarians and vegans in the world. Uh, Tel Aviv is a vegan paradise. I haven't eaten there, but I've been told that the best shawarma in um, in Israel 
is vegan shawarma. It's not just the best vegan shawarma. They say it's the best shawarma. It's award-winning. Um, that's in Tel Aviv. Uh, so being vegan here is really very easy. Um, but I, I see that, that uh, the businesses that are vegan-centered and vegan-friendly are growing a pace. So the one-time difficulties uh, are no longer exist. It's a pretty easy thing to do. Um, I, did, I became vegan very, very gradually. Uh, I know that there are people who do it much more instantly and successfully. I had to transition. I went from becoming kosher to then only eating red meat on Shabbat and I was still eating fish and chicken during the week and then it became just eating chicken for Shabbat and then I cut that out and uh, then it became I was still eating dairy products but no longer cow milk so for quite a while I was eating um, dairy products from goat sheep and, and buffalo cheese and, and just drinking uh, sheep and goat's milk. And then I made the final transition um, almost seven years ago. And I'm a happy, healthy vegan. The reason why I'm a happy, healthy vegan is because I am satisfied with being fantabulously imperfect. I learned from being kosher that absolutism is impossible. According to kosher laws, uh, if something is not kosher in its one part in 60, the food is, is kosher. Uh, because we know that any kind of uh, a way of eating <clears throat> cannot be uh, absolutist. So I try to do my best and be 100% vegan, but if it happens, and it has happened, that for instance, some um, rose hips, not rose hip, yeah, um, primrose oil supplements that I was taking, it turned out that the capsule wasn't vegan. Uh, I didn't freak out about it. Um, I didn't do it intentionally. Um, I just stopped. Uh, I, I, I don't make it. Um, I don't make it unpleasant by, by, by becoming obsessed with absolute perfection because I realize I'm living in a non-vegan world and it's going to happen. It has happened that I thought something was not tested on animals, a shampoo or, or, or soap, uh, and it turned out that it was. I try to be as careful as I, as I possibly can, but no mistakes are going to be made. I don't berate myself when I, I make mistakes. Um, as far as uh, buying non-leather goods, I do a lot of my shopping in the shuk where everything is cheap anyway and if I see a pair of shoes or a handbag and it looks like it might be leather and I just ask the guy, is, is this leather? And usually the reaction that I get is, listen sweet cheeks, at, this, at these prices you can't expect for it to be leather. And I laugh and I say, you know, that's what I wanted to hear, that's just fine. Um, so it works out uh, pretty well. Um, I'm going to list in the description a number of names from whom I have learned a lot. None of whom do I follow their program 100%. None of whom. I choose very eclectically um, what works for me. For instance, I learn from people who follow um, 80-10-10, but from the very beginning I never even considered doing 80-10-10 because by the time I became vegan I was old enough to know that nature is far too wise and, and far too intelligent to be that formulaic. And any time we try to impose a formula on nature, it's, it's probably not going to work. <clears throat> uh, it might work for some, it's not going to work for all, and I'm one of those people that um, I always do better better with the messy. I, I can't 
regiment myself like that. With that, I've, I've learned a lot from them. I consider a lot of people who do 80-10-10 um, my teachers insofar as I eat raw, I follow what they teach, but I don't eat 100% raw. Uh, in the summertime, I enjoy eating about 70 to 75% raw. That's when I feel the absolute best. Um, I always have raw fruits for breakfast. I still drink coffee. I do, I drink coffee. I am sorry. Hate on me. I'm not giving up my coffee yet. Um, maybe someday I will, but in the meantime, I still do my coffee with either coconut or, or uh, almonds or hazelnut milk. And I sweeten it with stevia, and um, I have my vegan gourmet coffees. Um, maybe one day I'll get off it, but again, I'm, I'm not um, striving for perfection. I'm happy with what I can do. So after the coffee's gone through my system, I have a, a raw fruit breakfast. Um, I don't eat piles of fruit. I'll eat a nice size bowl of different kind of fruit until I'm satisfied. I, I never did uh, a super high fruit uh, thing. Um, in the winter I eat less than 70% raw because when it gets cold I'm not going to stress out my body by trying to eat just raw past when it's comfortable to do so. Uh, so I eat a little bit more um, cooked food during the winter. In the summer, it's mostly salads. And uh, I add um, whole grain pastas to it. Um, we do eat a little bit of wheat, but we tend more to, um, to spelt. I even like rice noodles. Um, I do eat uh, vegan cheeses that I put into, um, into my salads. Uh, there's a company here in Israel that makes um, like the Moroccan style cigars and uh, kube and uh, schnitzel, schnitzel cuts kind of um, from a seitan from amaranth. I try not to eat a uh, seitan from wheat. I think that's too much gluten. I don't do gluten free, but I also am um, not going to like eat, you know, like nothing but gluten. So when I found that this product was made from gluten from tamarinth, I was very happy to find it and I enjoy eating that and that's my schnitzel. Right? Um, it is possible to reach the level of health of let's say Marcus and Cara, but not just from veganism alone. And um, I was warned, when I first became vegan, I, I bumped into someone I've known for many, many years. She is a professional dietitian at the hospital here in Svat, and I told her I became a vegan. She had mentioned that I had lost weight, I was looking well, and she said to me, uh, anytime we upgrade our diet, you get a glow. Don't expect that glow to last the body naturally tends to take for granted that which it eats and that glow will go away expect that and i'm very very happy that she told me that because that is exactly what happened if you're expecting that glow to last you're going to be disappointed it doesn't last what some people then go on to do is supplement the veganism with all kinds of supplements and diets and enemas and, and um, in order to maintain that glow you have to become, you know, project my health. That becomes your whole life, your whole identity. Um, I'm not putting it down because those are the people that tend to have the most information about veganism, I cannot do that. My whole life is not veganism. If one were to say, how do you identify? I would say I identify as someone who tries to make the world 
a, a more peaceful, happy, healthy place in general. And one of the contributions that I make to that is a vegan style of eating. So really what I'm on about is I'm all about peace insofar as I'm able to. Um, and part of that is being vegan. I never made that my identity. I don't think it's healthy to ever tag yourself, I'm vegan. You know, people walking around with the vegan t-shirts and all, I've never done that. If somebody asks me how I eat, um, if it becomes a natural part of the conversation, I'll talk about it. I never bash people over the head with it. Uh, walking down the street, you're never going to pin me out as a vegan. I'm not wearing a green t-shirt that <laughs> says vegan. Um, it's part of walking peacefully, is um, doing a peaceful thing in serenity. In, and, and keeping everything gentle around you. So I've, I've never gotten into the strident, militant kind of thing of, of veganism. If I'm asked, I'll suggest it. If somebody notices what I'm buying at the store or, or notices what I'm choosing uh, from a table in which there are different things to eat, then sure, I'll talk about it. But part of keeping the peace is, is not uh, being on a crusade. Um, I don't do a lot of exercise, as you can see. Uh, I should. I should exercise more. Um, the contribution of veganism to my health is very, very important to me. But that's not what I'm totally on about. I'm happy to be able to, just at my age, uh, be able to be healthy enough to be comfortable in my body. I live a sedentary life because I learn an awful lot. And uh, people who have spent decades of their lives sitting and reading books um, can expect to have the, the body kind of atrophy in a way that people who live more active lifestyles can't. Um, would I like to be more physically strong and healthy and muscular and so forth and so on? Yeah, but when I put that up against um, how much time that'll take from my learning, I say, well, for me, the learning is more important. Um, it's very, very important to me when I eat something that I know that I haven't made big brown eyes cry. Um, I think a, a very important part of, of successful veganism is uh, making a covenant with your body and saying to your body, uh, listen, we have to make this work because um, eating the remains of, of, of animals who have suffered all their lives, or eating the, the milk products of animals whose young were taken away from them, so that I can eat this cheese just because it tastes tasty to me, just isn't on the table body. This is a non-negotiable. We're never going back to that. So body, you're going to just have to make do with these vegetables because there are no other options. Causing pain to eat is just a non-negotiable. And when we have entered into a, a covenant like that with our body, and the body gets a very, very clear, unwavering, unequivocal signal that it has to process the vegan food as living tissue, it does. It responds to that agreement. If the body picks up in the mind that it's a little bit negotiable, then the taste buds start to, t to tease you, to tantalize you, to try to, you know, then that, that whole thing happens. That does not happen when the body gets a signal where you're saying to it, um, listen, let's respect each other. Uh, we'll both be happier if we do this successfully together. 
um, I'm going to list a number of my vegan sources for information, people whom I watch and whose sites I turn to for information, um, some of whom I'm personally in touch with. I'm personally in touch with people from the Gerson Institute and we communicate on, on Facebook and they're wonderful, wonderful people. Some of whom I just know um, from their work on the net. Uh, these are all people whose wonderful, wonderful work and contributions have contributed to my vegan success. And again, one of the reasons why they've contributed to my vegan success is because I never intended to do exactly what they do or take it whole cloth. Everything that I know about juicing, I learned from Jay Cordage. But I never intended to live mostly on juice. Everything I know about 80-10-10 and what's good to eat is raw food, I learned from Christina and Dan the man and um, Megan, that lovely young woman, Megan, um, but I never had any intention of living according to 80-10-10. I picked eclectically and um, made it work. I'm always uh, making adjustments. The way I, I notice, like, like um, I look back over a year and I see that gradually over a period of a year, um, my vegan way of eating has changed a little bit. There are some things that I'm doing identically to the way I did in the beginning, like eating mostly fruit, which I learned from uh, the Fit for Life program back in the 1980s when that book was written by um, Marilyn um, and what's his name? The Diamonds. Um, it'll come to me. Uh, and the idea of eating raw fruit just um, just made sense. So I, I do that. Uh, but other things change and I change in accordance with the, um, what are their names, Abba? Marilyn and uh, I don't know, the Diamonds. They wrote a book called Fit for Life. They wrote a few books. Um, and uh, some things do change. I'm always making adjustments. Um, I find that if I eat too many uh, vegan products, I don't feel so well, so I, I am uh, trying to limit that. Uh, recently, I, I'm eating less sugar. I'm putting stevia into my coffee. I'm eating less sugar in general. Um, when I do eat sugar, I try to eat more coconut sugar than cane sugar. Um, Cut out the honey a long, long time ago. Um, long time ago, probably within the first year that I was vegan, I went off the honey. And you know, once I found out how honey was made, I I, I couldn't. I, I I think that there there are more gentle ways of, of getting honey, but um, I can live without it. I love maple syrup. I like sugar from um, coconut sugar. So why should I, I eat honey? I don't. Um, I'm happy and, and reasonably healthy for my age. I became vegan um, just as I was transitioning into menopause. And my iron levels are higher than they've ever been. But that could be, again, because I'm not losing a lot of iron. But neither am I iron deficient. We have our vitamin B12 checked. Uh, by our vitamin B12 levels are just fine. I do supplement my diet with uh, spirulina. I take spirulina just about every day. And uh, evening primrose oil um, for my hair. I take a, a vegan hair uh, vitamin, which helps the body in general. And um, I take Dr. Christopher's, he has two formulas for the thyroid. So I, I take his, both of his uh, thyroid formulas together with um, eating Brazil nuts, two or three Brazil nuts every day, and some coconut oil. I don't eat gobs of coconut oil. I do eat some for my, um, for my thyroid. 
and um, and I take a, a vegan um, magnesium, zinc and calcium supplement. And that's basically about it. I hope that this has helped. Uh, yeah, there are old vegan folks and there are vegan communities that have been vegan for generations. It certainly can be done long term. And I hope that this con contributes um, something to the um, the happy and healthy and, and mutually respectful dialogue concerning veganism. Thank you for listening. Um, I'm going to show you my um, my raw cheesecake. I'm very proud of it. It's not as pretty as the stuff that Christina makes, you know, but um, I'm proud of it, so I'll show you what it looked like. We had it for Shavuot. Thanks for listening. Yeah, we do the whole uh, raw vegan cheesecake thing, which is absolutely perfect for the Shavuot holiday, which we just finished. Um, I made them as uh, cupcake kind of things and in bigger forms. The bottom of it is pistachios and uh, mulberries, dates, and coconut. And the cheese part of it is frozen banana, <clears throat> coconut cream some baobab powder and a little bit of coconut sugar and the top of there are two toppings the, the first topping is um, pineapple and dates and chia seeds that I put into a blender and then on top of that I had uh, I had cherries uh, dried cherries I soaked them with some more dates and more uh, chia seeds and put that on top of it um, I think everything here is organic except for the pistachios. <clears throat> um, we are very lucky, lucky to have a lovely, lovely family who runs a farm who supplies uh, the whole area uh, with, uh, with organic produce, which they deliver, and that's a big blessing. Recently, I also came across another project of... Um, an organic farm on which it's being run by some young people near uh, Tiberias. Um, uh, they have a program there for uh, helping young people who are getting into trouble and dropped out of school to work on the organic farm and help with the deliveries and uh, kids who otherwise wouldn't have a, a framework in which to be have an extremely healthy, productive, uh, loving way of, of uh, finding themselves. The people that run the farm are young people, so they themselves understand what it is to be a young person. And um, we're, I was just so delighted to find that project, and, and uh, it's an honor to, to be able to support them.